AVC, Dwayne here, or Laz, and uh, it's been a little bit of a hump here uh, since my last video. Uh, lots gone on in life, so to speak, that kind of held me up, so I wanted to get back now and at least give some kind of a quick update. Um, since my last video, uh, which was my Judas Priest series, the box I built, uh, the cabinet, which is, you can still see it, it's sitting right, there we go, over here. Um, as well as the Priest Vinyl Collection. Um, and then, uh, not shortly after that, uh, Northern California, in my area here, got hit with another huge fire. Um, and we were evacuated for over a week. Um, so it's been just crazy. Um, then, of course, with work, gearing up for the holidays and whatnot, which my work might be changing, which I'm very excited about. I might be changing jobs. Um, things are looking good with that. But uh, I wanted to jump on, and uh, I don't have a ton of stuff to show because I didn't want to make a long video. Um, I did go do Record Store Day, um, so I got to do that. It was the first Black Friday that I have had off work in almost 30 years. So I was very excited to get out there and enjoy this. I didn't get a lot of the Record Store Day releases. I only got a couple. Um, there wasn't a whole lot I was really after, but I just wanted to go do Record Store Day. Um, so I'm gonna show those, uh, talk about them a little bit, as well as uh, there's a couple other pieces that I picked up while I was there for Record Store Day that were not Record Store Day releases. Uh, as well as uh, a couple of eBay purchases. Um, so with that said, let's just get into it, okay? So the, one of the things that came out on Record Store Day that I did want to get, and I know everyone's posting their Record Store Day you know, pickups and all that, and that's great. That's part of the fun of this. Um, but one that was on the list that I did want was the uh, Rainbow in the Dark Live Dio Picture Disc. Um, had to have this, you know, who doesn't love some Dio, especially in picture disc? Um, I love the uh, the price tag is still on this one. I love what they priced it at, which is sixteen dollars and sixty six cents. Uh, makes sense for Dio, so I wanted to pick this up for the Dio collection. Um, what a loss! God, I still miss Ronnie, but so I did get that one. Uh, another one that was actually on the list that I grabbed <clears throat> right away was the uh, Fight War of Words. Um, had to have this, and come to find out, this is actually very a very small print for what it is. Um, it is uh, on white and black splatter, splatter vinyl, and it's limited to 1,500 copies. And you would think that this actually would have a bigger press run than that. That just seems kind of small for something with Rob Halford's name attached to it, you know, and such a great album like this to finally come out on vinyl. Um, I'm sure they probably could have sold, you know, 5,000 of these, no problem. So I was really shocked to see that. Um, if anyone did not pick this up or was unable to pick it up and is just curious to see, you know, what the vinyl looks like, there you go white with black splatter in it. Um, sounds really good. You know, the thing about colored vinyl and, and picture discs nowadays, they've got the pressings down really well where they sound really, really decent. However, that Dio picture disc um, sounds like a picture disc. Uh, at least in the in the quiet areas in your lead-in track and whatnot, you can hear the rumble that you get with old-school picture discs. Um, so you do get some of that. Once the track kicks in, it's, it sounds amazing, but you do get that surface picture disc noise with that. Um, this just sounds awesome. So I was happy to pick this up. So those were the two releases um, I did have in my hand. There is another one that I would like to get, but I didn't get it that day. I had it in my hand, but it got replaced with something else, and that was the, uh, the Solo Getty Lee album. Um, I have it on disc, so it's not that big a deal. Um, I'll eventually go back and get it, or I'll get one offline or something. But I, I had that in the stack. But then, uh, like usual, I always check the Iron Maiden section in the store. And lo and behold, this was in there. I didn't even know this was coming out. Um, this is a bootleg. But this is uh, Tales from the Beast, Paul Diano. 
And so this immediately overruled the Getty Lee solo record for me. Um, had to get this. And this is Paul uh, listening to it. It sounds like it's various recordings at various times with various Paul solo bands. Um, but there's, you know, obviously uh, a lot of Maiden tracks on here, Rothschild, Women in Uniform, uh, Phantom of the Opera, Sanctuary, Prowler, Killers, Iron Maiden. Um, but then there's some other tracks on here, S-A-T-A-N, uh, Bad, um, uh, Symphony of Destruction by Megadeth, um, which he does actually really well. It's really cool. Um, and this is on... I don't remember what color this is on. It is colored vinyl. And it's got a real nice flat matte finish to the jacket. Um, it's uh, Deadline Music, um, limited to 666 copies. And there it is there, red vinyl. So 666 copies, because every metal band is satanic, right? You know, I mean... You know, this is so un Paul Diano, but I have to laugh at that. Um, these bootleg companies and what they do. But yeah, it's it's uh, opaque red, black label. But for the Maiden collection and, you know, stuff like this, this is the kind of stuff that when you see it, you grab it. Because you probably will not see it again uh, unless you... Uh, seriously go online and hunt it down and uh, you know like let's say a year from now oh I missed that I need to find that it's gonna take you forever to find it but anyway so I was and this was the only one they had too so I was very happy to be there right place right time grab that and so then just flipping through the new arrivals in the use section um, I was happy to come across uh, this this is uh, this band's only album. They are out of uh, Hoffman Estates, Illinois, but they are on Shrapnel. Uh, one of my favorite bands, Vicious Rumors. You know, got started on the Shrapnel label. Many awesome metal bands came out on the Shrapnel uh, label, but this is Wrecking Ball by Ravage. So it's got a uh, remainder corner cut down there. Um, absolutely minty though. And this was uh, $7.99. So, you know, to see stuff like this for $7.99, uh, especially in this condition, uh, you just grab it. So, and this is, uh, what year is this? I want to say 86. Okay. It's got to be 1986. I'm going to open it up and look because it's got to be right in that range. I am not seeing a year, and it is 1986, yes, so, and if those don't know the shrapnel label, there you go, it's a silver label with a tank, and shrapnel records, uh, they were based uh, not far from me at all, um, maybe about 30 minutes away from where I live in uh, Napa, California, is where shrapnel was, their headquarters were, so a lot of the Bay Area metal bands, um, you know, uh, that was their, like, home label, you know, that they got signed on, signed on to. So that's what I picked up at the record store on Record Store Day. Um, a couple uh, weeks ago, I was in there and uh, did find this. And this is something, you know, I do love ska as well. My favorite ska band, this is. And I could not believe I found this just sitting in the new arrivals bin. And it's an original pressing on the original label. And this is um, Recriminations, the EP by the Toasters. And like I said, this is an original pressing. <clears throat> this was repressed later. The difference is on the jacket here, instead of being black and white, the image is the same, but the border is green. Uh, this is black. And Moon Records. Red Moon Records label. Um, excellent band. If there's any ska fans out there watching this video and you don't know who the Toasters are, um, look them up. Excellent band. So that's a nice rare one um, at a really good price. So on eBay, um, I grabbed these um, 
to replace some of my vinyl collection that was lost. Um, and uh, I was very happy to get them. Um, actually, they're actually in better shape than my originals were. So uh, this is the Live Ornaments Gary Newman box set, uh, 79 and 80. Um, I love Gary Newman. Always have, always will. Um, he was such an uh, innovator. Um, what can I say? You know, so scored this one. Beautiful shape. It's a three LP. Um, it's actually like EPs, but uh, it's a three disc set <clears throat> along with a book and a flyer in there. And then this is the uh, Berserker album. I grabbed this also. Uh, this is a UK pressing on, this is when Gary uh, started his own label, Numa Records. So I happy to grab that. And along with that one is, uh, this is the Gary Newman Live EP from the same uh, tour, as uh, or from the Berserker tour. And this one is on blue vinyl. I don't know if you can see the blue. It's kind of a dark blue. My light in here is not the greatest. There you go. Yeah, you can see the blue now. So you see the Numa label there, and that is actually the same image that was used on the first Two Boy Army album, Gary's first album. But so this is a UK pressing. It comes in just the uh, you know that kind of thick paper sleeve. So that was nice to replace those. Um, I'm slowly going to work on uh, rebuilding my Gary Newman collection. So I'll put those away. Um, and there's probably some other things too that I've, I've picked up, I'm sure. But I just wanted to get something up right away just so people know I didn't just you know disappear again or anything like that. It's just been crazy here. Um, I'm turning 50 here in a week. Um, so I'm coming to terms with that. Uh, and then uh, of course Christmas right after that. But so anyway, guys, just want to jump on, share, say hey, BC. Um, hello to my subscribers, um, and uh, all is well here. So until the next one, peace, stay in the groove, and Merry Christmas.